What's up guys and gals and welcome back to the Nerd Castle today in the world of indie games We're gonna take a look at something I think is kind of intriguing So I've been playing cookie clicker since like the dawn of time like I've been a cookie clicker enthusiast for a very very long time And so I enjoy myself some incremental games every now and again But this one landed on my desk and it seems to be working in kind of an interesting direction It's called micro civilization and when people reach out to me like, in order to ask me to show off their game, or to take a look at their game, or like do a preview of their game, they send kind of like a pitch deck, which is effectively just them pitching the game the same way you would pitch a business idea to an investor, right? And this one had an odd pitch. They kind of caught my eye. They said they wanted to make a mixture of something like Cookie Clicker, Civilization, Rome Total War, and Diablo. And I was like, all right, so there's there's no way you can take all of those ideas and make them all simpatico. Like, there, there's no way to make that work, right? And after playing this game and beating the demo a number of times now, because the game's not out, I've beaten the demo a number of times. I actually think that they are closer to the mark with that description than I gave them credit for. So today we're going to take a look at Micro Civilization. I would suggest that you not write this game off as just a clicker. This is actually, if you've ever played something called Despotism 3K, it's a lot more like that game than it is like Cookie Clicker or than it is like the incremental game that you would play uh, for like D&D &D or any of those millions of things you can get on your phone. This is actually considerably more complex. It has a lot more moving parts and in fact it's a game that I think has mostly won me over. After beating it a couple times I think there's definitely some balance passes that need to happen. Uh, just because there's some things that can kind of snowball out of control and completely and totally end your run. But, by and large, this is a really good idea, and I think the developer has kind of knocked it out of the park. So let's dive in. Let's play some micro-civilization. What am I doing here? Well, I'm at the beginning portion of the game where I'm building up my population, and I'm getting my huts built up. When it comes to the visuals, this game is kind of like the Aston Martin of clicker games. Uh, your society will go from the Stone Age all the way up to modern times with, like, factories and planes and stuff like that flying overhead. Uh, it builds a hut for each of these huts that I actually complete back here. You You'll see them start building them in the background. When you build certain buildings, they get added on into the landscape. When there's crises, it'll like rain fire. There'll be little guys running around stabbing your guys with spears. Very, very interesting stuff to watch visually. Uh, but right now, we're getting our beginning researches done. So I have invented fire, I have invented tools, and I have invented spearmans. And so that's where we're at. I'd like to get the hill fort researched because being safe is nice, but we'll go for cattle first because I'd like the increase in growth because this isn't just like a number go up game. This is a number go up game with reservations. Everything is linked in this game. So every single population needs a free house. If they don't have that and your population outruns your houses, there's a big chance for anarchy and riots and you can actually lose this game. Like this is not a game where there's no lose criteria. Like you can actually lose. If you have too many houses and not enough people to live inside of them, your fire risk goes up. And that's another crisis you have to deal with. The more people you have, the faster your research goes. But the more people you have, the faster they eat your food. Because you can see these little free guys over here going and gathering from that little crop on that side. These hands right here, how many workers we have. Every X amount of population, you'll be given a free worker. Free workers can be put inside of buildings, but if they're not put inside of a building... Uh, they will just generate food for you and make it auto-click for you so that you don't have to worry about it. We can also build our Spearmen right here, which I'm going to do real fast. Spearmen are an ability that we use in combat. This game does have a form of combat and diplomacy, but it's more like you're terraforming the map to do what you want it to rather than doing actual diplomacy itself. Conceptualized what you're doing is you're forcing the map to provide certain resources for you via the decisions you make with neighboring tribes and stuff like that. Now, now that we've invented the ploch, it looks like our food is coming in very rapidly and we're starting to generate population at a much more satisfactory rate. The goal of this demo is just to make it to the end of the tech tree and to research very tall buildings. Once you've done that, it will take you to the metagame progression that happens in between runs where you will build chunks of a building called the Tower of Babel that will make you like generate more population for each time you fill up on food or like start out with 100 houses already pre-built uh, that will then make your 
process faster each time you play through the game. However, I think going up through the tech tree is disabled, and that's just how the demo ends for right now. Either way, the demo has made me a true believer. It's rare that I get enthusiastic about a game anymore, and this is definitely one that as I was playing it, I was like, all right, this developer is on to something here. We've reached 50 population, so we can get this little star right here, and it unlocked our first leader. So leaders, you're probably asking yourself if you're paying attention. You were like, so where does the Diablo portion of the game come in? Uh, so every X amount of population, or every time you do a quest, you get to draw out of the bag for a important person to be born to your society. They will be of different qualities. They will be of different values, just like Diablo loot. And that will change the amount of affixes they have. So Corey Moseman here has been born. If we put him inside of our culture slot right there, he will give us one to two damage on our auto attack. He will make our spearmen hit harder. He will make our forts generate wood per click, I think. This iconography needs to be worked on so that when you mouse over it, it tells you exactly what it does. Sometimes it can be hard to derive. And then he imbues us with a spirit of nationalism, which makes our auto attack hit for 30% more damage. You can also take these guys. There are a number of recipes. This right here is a Herodric cube for these little guys where you can combine them and you can generate new affixes and stuff using all the recipes. It's a very smart idea that's going to push replayability up to the moon and like digging for the perfect cultural leader for whatever your build is to work. And so as you can see, from what I've showed you already in like five minutes, it's really easy to, I think, reduce the personality of this game down to just like, uh, it's just a clicker. But no, I actually think this developer is actively onto something. Like, I, I think he's in a really good place right now, and I think if this game is given, like, the proper love and touch and squeezing, it could turn out to be something really special. I'm going to go ahead and build a forestry hut. When you build the important buildings like the forestry hut, they give you an ability. So this is an active ability that I can click to just get 240 wood. It will apply that, so that would give me 12 houses, 60 free spaces. Whatever project I'm working on, it'll add 240 wood to it. I can also assign a worker to this. We will lose food output, but it will generate way more wood. Now, we're kind of like on a... We're on a little bit of a, a stiff diet right now. So we're going to have to kind of like keep things... I think a little bit lean when it comes to building houses. You kind of want to keep your population and your free spaces in alignment with one another. Otherwise, things have a tendency to kind of fall apart. Uh, you can go to war in this game. Let me build up my hill fort, and I'll show you how that's done. Oof, it's going to take a whole bunch of clicks to get to the... All right, my poor, poor RSI. Let's do this thing. Let's just click it out real fast. I'm not lucky enough. I don't have a mouse that allows me to auto-click. I know I can get one in Windows, but... I don't know. I wasn't planning on playing a clicker game today. Now that we have our hill fort ability added on in there, I'll show you what war looks like. Uh, there's tribes all around you, and there's also locations of interest. You can choose to fight the tribe over here, and if you fight them four times, it will convert the tile into farmland, which gives you a bunch of food. Or you can do diplomacy with them four times, and if you do diplomacy with them four times, it will convert this into a village like this guy over here, and then you can trade with them, or you can use them for or research, like technological research. There's also a forest down here. Uh, what is, if I convert that in, what does that do? Completing all stages. Uh, it looks like my granary gives me an extra soldier. Or I can go fight with woolly mammoths over here, and then it'll get converted into a forest, which makes our lumber mill better. Okay. I don't really like care. Uh, none of those options seem great to me. The farmland sounds nice, so let's go murder our neighbors. And as you can see, our little guys, they're going to get into a phalanx with spears, and they're going to march off into the distance. Because if there's one thing I know about humanity, it's that we love to find a threat and stab it in the face. Those guys from the west side of the river, they're no good. We're from the east side of the river. East side of the river rules, and our differences are irreconcilable. Prepare for a millennia of slaughter. The war is almost upon us. Unfortunately, my research is going very slowly right now. So combat takes the form of this meter right here. The goal of the meter is to kill the enemy's health bar with your various abilities that you've stored up before this little arrow gets all the way to the left. And every time it passes one of these thresholds, something bad's going to happen. Now, I've used my hill fort. That's gotten rid of the penalty for this arriving right here. And when he runs into this, it's going to deal a bunch of damage to him. So watch this as it hits. And you can see little horse guys running around too with little horn hats on. 
There you go. And it killed them. So we're good to go. Unfortunately, I gotta rebuild my spearmen. And I also need to rebuild my hill fort. But that's what combat looks like. And it does get more complex. Like, late game, those are called crises. Crises can be anything from a famine to war. And you have to fight against it with spearmen and, like, hill forts and stuff either way, no matter how it works. But anyways, it's called a crisis. Uh, they come up every now and again. And, and the consequences to them can get very, very dire, up to and including basically ending your run and killing off your society uh, and them failing to develop and continue forward. Now, as a reward for defeating the barbarians, we got $54 and we got another hero. Uh, let's see what kind of hero we got. We got, sir, what do you do? Wilmer Kerpke gives us food output. Whenever we hit the enemy with an attack, it stuns the crisis for one second. If our granary is active, we get more wood per click. And then stratocracy, whenever we defend, so that's whenever an enemy runs into one of those shields from our hill fort or whatever, there's a 33% chance that they'll take an extra auto attack as free damage. It's not bad. Uh, they definitely need to make these a little bit clearer to read, though. I know what they mean because I've played probably a lot more than a lot of other people have played the demo. I actually put more time into this video than I usually do just because I liked the game and I wanted to play it more. I think it's pretty cool. Uh, but that having been put out there in the open, there are some definite problems with both the balance of this game and the iconography. It's very, this game is very prone to death spirals. That's why I'm being so careful to make sure my houses and everything are in alignment is because once you get into one of them death spirals, man, it, it can get a little bit gnarly and scary and difficult to pull out of the nosedive. Uh, we've got our plow, so our food is coming in even better right now. Let's get flour, I guess. Let's do the barracks, I suppose. Uh, the nice thing is you can play this game at your own pace. So in general, the game is not spamming you with crises unless you've let your numbers get way out of alignment. And if you are mostly lined up and keeping everything on the same linearity, you should be good and you should be able to think about your next decision and decide when you want your next war to happen and like decide when you want your next fight to happen or your next diplomacy or whatever else. Uh, we got 54 bucks right there. We can use the 54 bucks uh, to increase the amount of resources we bring in. We can use it to stun a crisis for 20 seconds, which basically is an auto win. Uh, you can get a research grant, which gives you a huge boost to your research. Just depends what you want. Circular guy over here, Nathaniel Treester, makes us get more stone per click. Uh, it looks like we get free population by damaging the enemy. Uh, and it looks like we get auto clicking. It looks like he gives us Republic, which allows us to cancel out a crisis in exchange for two of our workers. It's not the worst. It should be fine. Now that we've got our auto clicker, it should start building huts much more evenly than it was before. Our population's at 235. Huts are coming out about as fast as population is expanding. So we'll keep it right where it's at. I do need to build another hill fort, and then I think we'll fight Barbarians level 2? Maybe? Just for the extra cheddar money? I don't know, I'd like to get 300 bucks together so that I can get a research grant, but I just don't know if it's going to be feasible. Research output is definitely a problem for us right now. Oh, there's a new location. What is that like? Cannibal Mountain? Huh. Cannibal Mountain, huh? Oh, I can convert that to a fortress? What does that do? When barracks active, you gain another fort capacity. Oh, nice. That'd be cool. All right. Uh, let's do a level 5 war crisis real fast because I think we can handle it. I think we'll mostly be okay. Especially if I can get the, the barracks built up before we get there. I think we'll be in pretty solid grounding. But after that, we're going to want to slow up a little bit. And maybe not take on quite so many gnarly outcomes. Research is almost done. That should give me enough time to build one. There's our encampment right there. That takes wood. We'll use that ability right there just to get it stocked up faster. Now, it is important to note that it does take a population to run that fort. So if you see your food production go down, you'll know why. But the benefit is now I can have three hill forts instead of one, which means I can insulate myself from three consequences when the enemy gets there 
much more effectively and safely. So let's get those built real fast so that we can throw down and scrum with the enemy when he gets here. On top of that, it gave us an active ability that we can use that increases the damage of our spearmen by 300%. So that's pretty good. Uh, the barbarians are here. Let's go ahead and, you know, dust them up a little bit. We'll keep our hill forts going. I think we're definitely going to need them. All right, so all three of the consequences have now been taken care of. We are going to mush out spearmen as fast as possible just to keep damage going towards the barbarians. Damage is out. Fort killed them, so we're good. Oh, we still lost two population when they hit the fort, so I guess it doesn't completely negate consequences. Uh, we've got two guys out of the bag right now. We've got ourselves a common economy hero that increases our stun on attack. Gives us central planning, which increases our food output, which is really nice. I will take that. Uh, if I have two of these guys, I can sell them too, so I can make some money for that sweet research output. Let's get flour so that I can click to grow our growth a little bit faster. Sounds pretty good. We're not at war anymore, so I don't feel like we need to have a worker inside of the fort. Like, I think we're solid on that front. Instead, I would rather boost up my research capacity before anything else. Let's get the hut going. We'll put one guy working on houses real fast. I was going to say, oh, there's a chance. What's going on right here? Uh, Overclicking. I forgot about that. If I click too much, your button heats up and it increases. This right here is your chance in the next minute of having a crisis that you have to deal with. And so in the next hour, we have a 71% chance of spawning a level 6 crisis. So that could be like a riot. Uh, that can be you know, an insurrection. It can be like a giant tsunami has come to wipe out our society. You never quite know. It's a chance of an uprising in this case. So I got to let my click heat go down for a little while. Does that cause click heat too? Like the auto click? It does. Auto click causes heat. Okay. I learned a new thing here today. Perfect. Well, that was a good thing to bring on board then. Many, many research is done. We're knocking things out one piece at a time. We're going to upgrade our spearmen into archers, I think, is a good idea. And then we'll try to get our growth rocking from here on out. We don't actively have, like, a ton of projects to work on. It's pretty much just, like, the windmill for right now. But I'm pretty sure the windmill just flatly gives us more food for each, for, like, the person that we have working inside of there. So I'm going to give that a go real quick. Yeah, it did, in fact. It made our food production go up. Pretty much to the moon. Very nice. We also get an ability, I think, that allows us to spawn more food. If I No, it's the granary that does that. So this allows us to double our output for whatever the next thing we click is, uh, which includes, like, the 270 wood and whatnot. Uh, go ahead and give me a bunch of houses, actually, with our wood click right there, because we're starting to stack on population a little bit. Doesn't look like I have anything else to build, so I'm going to take that off real fast until we catch up on the free space. And then we've got our archers. We want our breeding for sheep, which is like a weird hobby if you really think about it. Like the first guy to come up with animal husbandry was really sitting there watching a bunch of sheep in a field and like thought to himself like, you know, I get richer every time I have a new sheep and plus I kind of like watching. How can I incentivize these sheep to do it more? And that's like the foundation of all human society right now. Just one weirdo that was just like, yeah, dude, I could watch sheep bang. Now that we've invented pottery, it looks like we can do a dry storage over here, which would be great. That means we've got a guy working inside of here at the moment, but we've got a big shiny button now we can push to generate 1,300 food, which should give us... We get 10 population for every 200 growth. That's 1,350 growth. So yeah, you know, it'll boost our population up by like a good 70, I guess, every time we click it. So it might not be a bad thing to keep up and running. However, we are mostly stagnant with our food now, so we're going to need to figure out a way to do that. Uh, the breeding program helped out a little bit. We're going to end up with too many houses pretty shortly, so we're going to have to fix that problem too. Let's go ahead and we'll start with money. We'll invent cash. Uh, money allows you to replace this right side button instead of it endlessly building houses. You can replace it with one that treads water and all it does is sit there for like 20 minutes and at the end of 20 minutes it says that you like sold wood or you sold stone. 
And it generates a whole bunch of cash that you can use to trade into other things that you might need. And this is the dangerous one. So, like, every X amount of time you spend in the research tree, you're going to run into, like, a paradigm-changing idea, like the division of labor. They're going to cause a 50% chance of something terrible happening at the end. Uh, so, there may be some kind of social crisis, effectively, that we need to fight off. Otherwise, we're not going to make it. So having our archers and whatnot topped off before we get there, probably not a bad idea. Just to make sure we have some hands to throw down range. Now we're back on producing huts. Go ahead and just like passively generate money for me for right now. Because our housing has kind of outrun the population that we're generating. Like we're still, population is still moving, but it's not moving like it used to be. Uh, it looks like we skated on through without any consequences. And as you can see, it replaced, we now have aqueducts. And you can see that we're living on stone roads and whatnot. Uh, we're going to want to invent... Let's invent... I don't know, man. Uh, phalanxes sound like a smart idea. In case we got to hold off enemy attacks. Because I think we got a big glut of combat coming. Okay, we have a big food draw problem as of right now, actually. It looks like we've bottomed out on that front. Probably because it put my workers inside of the market would be my guess. So let's go ahead and we'll take people off wood chopping for a second and just kind of see how that affects things. Yeah, that kind of bailed us out. Now we've got plus two, but we definitely want to wait for the phalanx. It looks like I can sell stone as well, which gives us a 0 .3 buff for five minutes. We've already kind of got that right now, though. So, like, I'm not that upset about it. We're, we're already selling, like, wood or whatever. I don't know if it's going to upgrade all my archers into phalanxes when it gets there, too, or if I'm going to have to redo it. I suppose we'll find out. Uh, it automatically converted them, actually. And now people have, like, little lights coming out of their houses. Good. Uh, next research should be... I don't know, probably the stone wall. Things that allow me to defend myself sound like a really smart idea right about now. Let's go ahead and we'll take a level 4... Conflict right here. And sort of like see what happens. I don't know if it's going to work out great, but we're going to give it the old college try. Like we're going to take a stab at it. I don't know when I get my next uh, civilian as well. We need to get like another worker down here. We're kind of hurting on the worker front. I can pretty easily just hit that guy to get 70 population. But now we're kind of like negative on food. So I don't know if that was like the wisest decision I've ever made. What does that do? We have a chance of disease because there are vagabonds arriving in our city. Okay. Bit of a bummer, but that's the way she goes, I guess. I'm going to try to do this. Oh, we've actually got, hey, one stone wall ready to go. Good. We'll also get mud brick abodes, and we'll start converting these places into little huts and things. Uh, yeah, deactivate that to get our food supply back up, I guess. The market's eating up a lot of our food right now. Level 6 barbarians. Oh, yeah, dude. Phalanxes. That's what's up, dude. Phalanxes don't care. Phalanxes are some cold pieces of work out here. Some stone-cold gangsters up on that thermopolizing, bro. Thermopolating. Thermopping them up. All right, let's go ahead and grab another one, stab them. And we have successfully navigated the barbarians who attacked us after we attacked them first. Uh, what do we have here? An elite economy hero. I just have an, a common economy hero. So add to my base damage. Plus 100% population whenever you grow. Oh, we don't need that. I'm already getting 10. So getting like 20 every time this meter goes up would actually be like mayhem. That'd be super bad. Well, let's get some huts going real fast. Our food is actually going kind of nutty boys right now. And we can convert that into abodes. There we go. And abodes should like stand still for the most part. Because I don't think we really have any passive stone coming through. And what you'll see in the background is as we start building these abodes, the little houses will upgrade. And they'll start looking a little bit nicer. Now go ahead and give me clicks right there so that we can get the phalanx done. And our next research will be the pulley system. Sure, build a quarry. Why not? It wants me to go hunt some woolly mammoths. And I feel pretty positively about that idea. So let's go, like, 
Hunt some woolly mammoths. We'll send out our spearmen to go do the mammoth thing. I'm going to build up a couple more phalanxes while we're in the neighborhood, just with some clicky boys. But it should be all right. Uh, I can boost my population a little bit. It'll take us up over a 1,000, which I feel like is smart. Let's mash out some abodes, though, real quick. Yeah, just like a few more abodes to make sure that we have housing for all of these dudes coming in. And that should unlock another leader. Nice. Is this leader good or is this leader garbage? Uh, this leader is Terrence Milspa. Apparently Terrence Milspa gives us food, stone wall damage, phalanx damage, and it makes our granary generate f free stone, I suppose. And then it looks like on defense, our blocks do 33% more damage. It seems like an all-around increase to what this guy was doing right here. This guy was kind of like a filler spot. That other guy's just, like, better. Uh, so we don't want to do this last guy right here because the game is over when we do that last guy. I will do the last guy to show you the meta progression that exists inside of the game with the Tower of Babel uh, before we get there. But for right now... Oh, there's a lumber mill upgrade. Might as well. Yeah. Throw some wood at it. Why not, cousin? I can actually probably put somebody to work at the lumber mill just to make this go faster, too. I don't really want to wait on it. I also didn't build a stone wall because I'm a dummy. You can see some of our stone brick buildings in the back are starting to heat up, too. All right, level four mammoths are here. The phalanx one-shotted the mammoths before they even arrived in town. And now we've got an enormous food boost coming through, and we got two new leaders. Uh, so we're going to have to figure out... That food buff is something. How long does that last? Five minutes? Okay, just about everything lasts five minutes in this game. For our two new leaders, it looks like we have a rare belief hero and a common economy hero. Okay. Now, with the Rare Belief Hero, we get Phalanx damage. It's not a bad plan. We also get plus one damage to our normal default melee attack. If our barracks is being worked in, it gives us free... Okay, yeah, throw them in there. Rosanna credit just seems like the better version of what we already have. Rosanna, Rosanna. All right, let's get our Phalanxes all nice and filled out. And, like, I really want to. So each of those nodes on the map convert into different things. I want to destroy these barbarians. I want it real bad. I want to take out the barbarians, something fierce. But I don't know if we're strong enough to do it. We do unlock a thing, though, if I do it. So, like, I'm tempted. I'm highly tempted. Ugh, we have no free space left. Hold on. We need more abodes. Abode me up, baby. I need to see more of these houses cut from stone out here. It's doing all the background houses first. I want to do the foreground houses first. But yeah, we're starting to evolve into a culture that has, like, solid buildings. That's good. I like it when my buildings are solid and don't fall down and murder me. Uh, we can also get a quarry over here, which I feel like is a pretty strong play, too, just for generating tons of stone. Like, on the same level that we can generate wood. There's our stone quarry in the back. You can barely see it at night. But it does give us solid ticks of stone for when we're trying to build things like stone walls. Very helpful stuff. Good. Ugh, I think I gotta send it, man. I, I think we gotta go fight the level 4 barbarians. We get a level 7 boss right there. But, like, I think we gotta do it. Because we're so close to defeating the barbarians four times and seeing what the reward is inside the reward goodie crate. I have chosen this instead of going for the victory technology because it's more interesting for gameplay. Oh, our guys have little helmets now, too. You can barely see in the dark, but they have little helmets and, like, a little standard now when they're going out to attack the enemy. They actually have, like, formal battalions. It's no longer just a loose gang of guys with pointy sticks. It's now, like, an organized military. Here we go. Will we defeat the boss? Only time will tell. So we want to deploy three walls right there. We want to hit them with the phalanxes as hard as we possibly can. Then we need to go back into producing phalanxes. Uh, we need to put these guys to work right here. I will use those abilities right there to get even more phalanxes. So I have three of them. 
Oh, we've got like pretty solid head starts on them, man. It's going to depend how long they stay stay. It depends how long they stay stunned for. If I can get like a couple more phalanxes up and ready to rock, we're going to be in really good shape. Unfortunately, I used up all my wood abilities, so that's pretty much all we've got. Stonewall does a respectable amount of damage, but not like tons. All right, that's good to go. Turn on the auto clicker for me, would you? I'm fighting right now instead of providing homes for my people because that's the kind of leader that I am. Listen, you don't need to be a good leader if you can just keep people in a persistent state of constant crisis. Just keep them always focused outwards and they'll never look inwards. That's the secret. Punch that guy in the face. Time to die. Oh, I keep clicking the... Time to die, barbarian boss. I have defeated the threat. Uh, my people, however, are starving greatly so let's go ahead and turn off every single thing that i have so far i will put them back on the granary and that gives us 13 food to play around with yeah we're gonna need some housing too so let's go ahead and get that mashed out real quick otherwise things are gonna get ugly quick but we've defeated all the barbarians so now what we should see if we go to the map is that this is now complete and we can convert it to farmland there it is. It has now been converted to farmland, so we get plus nine to our food production as long as we have a windmill active, and that's fixed our entire food crisis. And so the entire game is kind of you using your forces to terraform different areas into things that are useful to your society and having it slowly grow. Uh, let's go ahead and finish the game off, and I'll show you what the metagame progression looks like, but I'm a believer in this one. I think they've done a good job. This is a solid idea for a game. Hey, we passed. It had a 75% chance of us. I was trying to prep soldiers and everything. We had a 75% chance of a crisis. Uh, but it looks like we're good now. Let me go ahead and collect my stars real quick. And we will take these guys and unpack them. And we'll take a look at them in just a second to see if they're better than what we have. But we can now ascend. So there you go. Your current civilization ends. You keep all of your heroes by ascending. You get permanent upgrades. Are you ready? Uh... Just a few more clicks. There's nothing... Yeah, I was going to say, they don't unlock the next thing for you to move up to. So, let us ascend. Oh, society. It's all a mistake. 20,000 years of human history. It's mostly just arguing on the internet. Oh. So, it's going to tabulate all of the things that we navigated. And if you navigated those things up to the level that it expects, it will unlock new perks and stuff that you can play around with. Uh, it looks like we're rising up from the primordial waters right now, and the flower has been born of our workshop levels. And so as you can see over here, uh, you will use some of the points that you played around with to generate more stone per click or increase your base damage uh, to make it more likely. Oh, we need like a black lotus in order to make that work. Okay, uh, starting gold then. Yeah, starting gold sounds great. Let's get some starting gold, some starting wood generation, and then you go back in to do it all over again using the heroes that you've been caref carefully herodric cubing to get even further. This is a great demo. It's a great idea. My complaints are it needs some balance passes. It's too easy to get into a death spiral over like one thing that went wrong. A uh, crisis can trigger another crisis, basically, and it can do that until it levels your society and there's no way to get out of it. And then I guess the other half is that I can't wait for it to come out. That's pretty much it. Just balance, balance, polish, polish. I'll catch y'all later. Thanks for hanging out. This is Micro Civilization. See y'all next time. Bye, folks.